And then the command that we're going to do next, or the option we're going to use, is the remote AS. So again, this is indicating our the autonomous system of the remote neighbor. So in this case, it is going to be 100. Again, IBGP is a BGP connection within the same autonomous system. So I'll go ahead and hit enter on R3 and what we should see, see shortly come up is we should see if everything is configured correctly we should see the BGP neighbor relationship come up. Again on R3 if I do a show IP BGP sum we can now see that the AS showing up for neighbor 192.168.13.1 is autonomous system 100. So now we can see we have a BGP adjacency change, neighbor 192.168.13.1 is up. We see that on router 3 and we see 13.3 .3 is up from router 1. So now if I do a show IP BGP summary on R1, we see on R1 that we have been established now for almost 30 seconds. So our BGP neighbor relationship is good now on R1's from R1's perspective. If I go to router 3 and do a show IP BGP summary, we can see also that our neighbor which is 13 at 1 which is router 1, we now see it in autonomous system 100. We see that we've been up for almost 1 minute and that we are receiving two prefixes. So let's go back to our trouble tickets. We can see that the task is telling us to configure the network so that R1 and R3 peer IBGP with each other. So it appears as though we have fixed trouble ticket number one in this lab. So let's move on to trouble ticket number two. Trouble ticket number two says that after you have restored the above task, your junior level network administrator says that he is unable to ping R3's loopback zero IP address. I'm sorry. Your junior level network administrator says that he is unable to ping from R3's loopback zero IP address to the loopback zero IP address on R2. Configure the network so that network connectivity is restored. R3 should be able to ping with 100% success from source 183.3.3.3 to destination 174.24.0.1. So it appears as though now that we have the, B the IBGP neighbor relationship restored between R3 and R1, we see that we're trying to source some pings from R3's loopback zero interface to the destination loopback zero interface on R2. And this is unsuccessful. So if we go to R3, what I like to do first when they tell us that we need to ping and have reachability, one of the first things I like to do is just go to the router that they're telling you to do the source ping from. So in this case, R3 will do a ping on R3. We'll go ahead and ping 174.24.0.0. I'm sorry, dot zero dot one. And then we're going to source this from our loopback zero interface. So first off, I just like to make sure that we do not have reachability. It's always good just to check this before you get started. So it appears as though we cannot ping the 174.24.0.1 network from R3's source loopback zero interface. So one of the first things you want to do on R3 to check this is you want to do a show IP route. We can see that we are learning via BGP only one route and that is the directly connected interface between R1 and R2. So we don't see the 174 network 
in the routing table on R3. If I do a show IP BGP, we can look at the BGP table. And what we can see from here as well is we do not see the 174 network being learned via BGP as well. So let's go ahead in this case router 3 is not receiving the network. We can see if there's any filtering going on on R3 to see if it's being filtered inbound. If we do a show run interface FA00 on R3 just to make sure we have no ACLs or any type of filtering going on which might be causing this network to be blocked. So we don't see that. Also if we do a show run pipe to begin BGP on R3 we can check our BGP configuration to make sure there's no route maps no prefix lists or distribute lists or anything in BGP that might be filtering this network and we don't see anything in BGP on R3. Also you can do a show IP access lists we don't have any on R3 so we know that R3 is not filtering this network the 174 network. So let's go ahead and move to R2 one hop closer I'm sorry let's move to R1 which is one hop closer to R2 and do some troubleshooting on R1. So from R1's perspective if I do a show IP route you can see that we are not learning the 174 24 network as well on R1. So one of the first things we want to do again is we just want to ping to see if we have reachability between R1 and R2. Again, this is an external BGP neighbor relationship. So we'll ping 166.0.0.2 and you can see that we have reachability. So again, this clears layer 1, 2 and we have basic layer 3 reachability. So, so it's always good to start in the middle of the OSI model at layer 3, see if we have reachability.